Hey yo, my planet coaster friends, Johnny Five Alive here, and welcome back to another episode of Coaster Spotlight. Today we have an alpine themed bundle, starting things off with a fun water cascade. Then we're moving over to a launch coaster, taking us through the alpine mountains and finishing things off with a bit of a mini park and a multi looping coaster. So very fun episode here today, so stay tuned and let's check them out. All right, welcome back everyone. Hope you're all having a fantastic day. If you guys are new here, be sure to hit that subscribe button for more Planet Coaster content. And if you guys enjoy the content on the show, come check out our Discord if you want more of it. You can see the community building their creations before they get to the show. We have put a lot of work into this community. So if you guys do enjoy the community, the show, the contest and all that stuff, please do consider supporting it further by checking out our Patreon page. Even just a dollar goes a long way. And with that out of the way, let's dive into the first creation of the day. Snow Splash, created by Graf Hugo, one of our Discord master builders. And here they say, the coaster is an alpine and snowy coaster that's winding around two bigger rock formation lift hills. I hope you all have fun. Boom, short and sweet. Let's jump right on into it. All right, ladies and gentlemen, here we are at Snow Splash. It is a very cool looking theme. We're gonna, uh, no pun intended. We're gonna uh, jump right on it and talk about the aesthetics after. So it is a uh, water cascade coaster. Here's a look at all the results if you want to see them. And let's get on this one that's take, wait, that's not the boarding station. Where's, where did they take off from? Here. All right, let's get on this guy. Oh, we got some funky music. Boom, 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 boom. I'm a little sad that the music's only in the boarding station. <laughs> ah, fun coaster. It's short, it's sweet, but it's uh, definitely full of details. Now, I'm, I am curious about the part count because it's going to affect my feedback. We had 200 parts left, so a little bit to work with. Now, I think this thing is aesthetically beautiful. You got the little bit of snow piled up. You got snow splash there. It might be a little bit repetitive with the sign. I think just having that one eno is, is enough or, or this one, but you also have it down here. <laughs> snow splash. This one is the most awkward. I think you could do away with that one. Just personally, it just feels a little bit squashed in there and it, it is eating to your part count which uh, you do have a couple hundred extra to work with. And if you deleted that sign, you'd have even more. Um, one thing that really stood out to me was this bend here. Uh, we hit the splash down and we're coming around this corner and it's very bare. And I think just even using up 50 of those pieces just to fill in this area a little bit more with rocks, some trees, some shrubbery, uh, anything really, some lamp posts. You have these lamp posts going up the lift. Why not have them coming around the bend as well? Why not? Uh, I love the custom supports on this though. I got this almost claw or fan holding up this, the uh, coaster there. 
It looks phenomenal. Uh, I really love the custom supports, the way it's integrated into the mounds. The boulder work looks great. I mean, the combination between boulder work and supports is absolutely phenomenal. I think the whole thing comes together as a beautiful presentation, and I think anyone would be proud and happy to have this in their Alpine parks. I think the coaster was as long as it needed to be, considering you wanted to go with the custom supports. Personally, I feel with these cascades, uh, once you get up that lift, you, you, would, you would like to draw out the coaster as Wait, where's the first lift? This one. You come down here, through here. Oh, it comes down this way. Yeah, you want to try to draw out the coaster as long as possible before doing the splashdown, but I, I do think that is quite enough. Let's see how much speed this has coming around the last bend here. You also want a good splash. I do feel like I had enough speed to come back around one more time, but it's just fine because that's a big mega splash you get out of that. So I think it's just fine. I really don't have a lot of feedback for you other than uh, decorating this one bend here. And uh, I, I maybe, maybe even this little bit of here, but I could see like once you um you know if you're putting this into your park or something work it into the terrain a little bit more so i think once it's in its natural environment it would look quite nice so while it does yeah as a blueprint itself it's missing a little bit of detail there once embedded and integrated it'll look great so really no complaints there from me. I think it looks amazing. So really good job on this one today, Graf Hugo. Superb blueprint. What did you guys think? Leave your comments down below for Graf Hugo. And let's check out the next creation of the day. Twisty Timbers created by Floofy Polar Bear, one of our Discord beginner builders. And here they say, this is my first complete coaster and submission. It doesn't have a storyline. Just a, just a twisty adventure throughout a timber forest. I am open to the critiques and suggestions, so feel free to say anything that doesn't look good. I recommend right... I recommend riding at 10 p.m. And when placing the blueprint, make sure the red cube is submerged in the ground and the green box is surfaced. Thank you for your time. Boom, you're very welcome. Okay, let's dive right on in. Okay, we will talk about the aesthetics after. We got a little Ferris wheel in there, I like that. And we're dealing with a Barghast, Typhoon Barghast. And there's a look at the stats, green across the board. Nothing that stands out too much here to me. Let's uh, wait for the next one to pull up and get right on it. I want to leave it running because how many trains do we have on this guy? We want to have them interact a little bit, so I'll cut to one when it's here. Now they did ask us to ride at 10 p.m. So we're also gonna give it a ride at 10 p.m. And there it is. Uh, one thing that it, this coaster reminded me before I forget that I wanted to say on the last creation, um, this one had a splashdown moment. I don't know exactly where it was. I think it was here when we passed by the waterfall or maybe it was down here. It was one of these waterfalls. There's a bit of a splash. I was gonna suggest that to uh, Graf Hugo. At one point on this coaster, we come down low and uh, for anyone, and just in general, if anyone's doing these water cascades, when you do dunk into the river rapids or the uh, log flume style part of the ride, if you don't want it, like if you don't want 
want to use that mechanic to loot like to completely stop your momentum entirely and you just come down for a second like here you can just fake it with having water panels there uh or some sort of fake water glass whatever and have big splashes come up and that still will get you a nice water ride uh and you can use that splash effect as much as you want and still have a good water portion on the ride but if it's something where you're feeling like oh i have i, I really want to run this coaster a little longer i want to do more with it and i don't want to splash it down without losing the momentum but i want it to be a water ride consider using effects like this where it comes down and then you have these uh you know you use the, the effects that you get in planet coaster to create the water splashes and that way it'll continue at full speed without stopping anyways back to this creation though i think the coaster layout was fun it had the banking where it needed banking it was smooth where it needed to be smooth so i think you hit all the proper elements i think for next time all i would suggest is challenging yourself to do less of a launchy coaster um the one benefit to using one of these coasters is whenever the coaster runs out of momentum you just hit a bit of a launch and we saw that here we saw that at the beginning and we saw that here so you're really you know using the force of the coaster to get you to where you needed to be and on one hand if you would have just done one massive launch at the very beginning it probably would have been too radical throughout here so i can understand why you broke it off into three launch sections and you did it properly again really not a lot of feedback for you there because i think you used the launches where they needed to be and you did it properly again if you would add one big launch here the uh, beginning part of the coaster would have been too radical, too too many G-forces, it would have been going too fast, and then it wouldn't have enough speed to make it through the rest of the coaster. So I think your use usages of the launch were spread out and timed properly, but again, it's it's one of those things where you may have designed the first bit of the track, and then you're like, I need some more speed to get through here, or it was too radical and you slowed it down. So it does remove a little bit of the challenge aspect of making a coaster, in, in my opinion, whereas if you have the one lift, you have to try to challenge yourself to uh, balance how extreme it is after the first drop, bring the coaster back up, run that momentum out and bring it back to the finish line. What you've done here is really nice in terms of coaster layout and the, the pacing, but for next time, challenge yourself a little bit more by using a lift coaster. It would give us a little bit more to critique on in terms of the coaster itself. We could see where the momentum is, where banking needs to be, how where you need to bring up the coaster higher. For what it is, you did it well, and I don't really have any feedback for you. Like I said, it's smooth where it needs to be, it's banking where it needs to be, and the launches are where they need to be. So. Good job. <laughs> in terms of theming and aesthetics, it feels like an alpine coaster. Uh, I like the front entrance way. It, it has like it's almost like a little marketplace of some sort. You have all the stuff up front. Uh, it looks really cool. Uh, I was drawn to this creation when I looked at it in the submissions. Even your boarding station wall, simple. It, it has detail. It has separation. It looks interesting. It's not just a box. You've separated it. So everything here is looking really good. Might be a little bit heavy on the trees, a little bit heavy on the trees, but it's not too bad. I think you could reduce some of the trees and replace it with some rocks. But other than that, I think that's just being a little bit gripey. Ferris wheel looks a little wedged in. I don't know how you'd set up the cues for that. Yeah, I really don't. I guess they just go plunk out the back. Yeah, I would like to see a little bit more integration there with the uh, Ferris wheel. Maybe a building of its own and a queue and a, a garden out front like you have here. I would do this kind of work, but for the Ferris wheel, just to kind of uh, let let the person know that's setting it up, that it has an obvious entrance way. And that way, when you integrate it into your park, you don't just have these squiggly queues running out. So I definitely work that up. If you're going to put a flat ride into your uh, blueprint, make sure that it's integrated well. Yeah, again, I, I think some of these, like sometimes it's it's nice to appreciate the rock work. I think reducing some of those trees actually wouldn't have been too bad. And just have some shrubs around the bottom, if that makes sense. You have it there. So you can see a little bit more of that, you know, that then this isn't impeded by trees because it's a really cool formation that you got going there. Letting that stand out for what it is a little bit better works. And same with this one over here. You want to kind of highlight some of your features rather than hide them, right? So for me, it's too much trees. I would reduce them. And uh, if somebody's putting this in their park, they can add more if they really want to. But I don't think reducing these trees, it's actually improving the way it looks. And then, you you know, because you can highlight those the rock work that you've done. And again, you can open it up with some more of this decoration. I like to see more of this throughout the park and less trees, personally. Um, you can have that here as well. I don't know what this is for, but it's a little marketplace. I didn't even notice it until I started removing the trees. You have a tree here as a centerpiece, but because it's smothered by all these other trees, you're not really noticing it. So I do more of that carts and that sort of thing around here. It's, it's starting to open up and look a little bit better in my opinion. 
So I would just add more of this clutter throughout these opening areas and reveal more of your rock work. And where it is a little bit bare, you could just add more rocks, more shrubs, and more flower beds and gardens around. Maybe some of those spiky fences as you have over here. I like the way that looks. So I just push that a little bit further and uh, you have the part count to work with it. So that's my feedback for you. I think the coaster is fun. I gave my thoughts on that, but the coaster as is, as a Barg Hest, I think it's designed properly and uh, the layout's pretty good. So there you go. What did you guys think? Leave your comments down below and let's check out the last creation of the day. Tungsten created by Capital Thrills, one of our Discord master builders. And here they say, hey, oh, Johnny and the gang, uh, and welcome to the mini side project I have now completed. Uh, this here creation is pretty much a testing ground for the terrain work and terrain pat, uh, terrain paints. This is a realistic B&M floorless featuring five inversions and featuring a similar layout to the real life floorless coasters such as the Patriot at California's Great America and Vortex at uh, Carowinds Story. Uh, built in 1666 or 1662 after the discovery of a new element, tungsten, a new high thrill steel twisty turning machine has been constructed in the very mines that discovered the element and still serves as a particular functionary mine of those who dare to come near this monstrosity to show tungsten's tensile strengths and durability. This here machine wraps and coils its way around the hills and mines of which the material was discovered. Dip, swoop, and swore around the Tungsten Valley and uh, soak up the surroundings. My final question for you, are you ready to ride? Uh, by the way, the blueprint version is coming soon. All right, very cool. Yeah, it is a park file, but when you guys do submit these things, don't submit it as a blueprint coaster. You submit it as a blueprint coaster. Uh, this is always gonna be a park coaster, not a blueprint coaster, because it is a park file. So there you go. Uh, and there's a difference between park coaster and exploration coaster. I see so many people sending c exploration coasters that are this small. And it's like, well, that's not, that's just a, just a park coaster. I'm not sure if anyone gets the difference there. I might have to re-edit my submission form a little bit. And I, I've been, I've been thinking about doing some changes to the form. I would like to have a, a drop down for choosing what coaster you're submitting. Wooden, multi-looping, you know, all that stuff. Cause I thought it would be fun if I could do like a wooden only bundle or a multi-looping only bundle. That'd be a fun way to do it. But I'd have to go back through all the submissions and label them. But uh, when I have some time, I might rethink about how I do this. Anyways, let's talk about the creation, the tungsten. Nice sign up front, nice sign up top. We have a mini park. We have guests in here. Uh, you said you used the custom terrain as well. Holy moly, it's loud in here. Coaster looks great. So custom painting. Is this really different than the normal Alpine? I guess there is, there's a bit of snow or rock or you can see some changes there because when you replace it, it does something to the terrain. So just keep an eye on the terrain there. So that's the exit. How do we get over to the queue? Right here. Some more of that terrain work. No, the terrain looks really nice. So you, you said a uh, blueprint version is coming soon. So if you do click the link to download this and you go to his workshop page, I'm sure you'll be able to find the blueprint version. And here we go. So here we have the uh, launch drive tire F25. Here's a look at all the stats if you want to see them. And let's give it a ride.
All right, a very realistic and fun layout on this guy here today. Love the placement of the block section. I'm really curious to know how you're gonna get this into a blueprint format when you've, you know, utilized the terrain so heavily. Uh, I especially love the lift as we're coming up this mine shaft. We can kind of see out, and as well as here, there's a little bit of light peering in. It looks really cool. Uh, I like the fact that you use the day-night sequencer in there. I mean, the whole thing comes together really nice, and I would really love to see how the blueprint version comes out. Let's see what your part count is. So you have 2,500 pieces, so if you go to do this as a blueprint, I'm assuming you're going to use 1,500 pieces of rocks to just replace some of the main terrain. Hopefully that's enough. That's going to be super tricky. Um, the one thing that's interesting about this is how it's such an open design. It's open, it's, um, you have... I don't know, it's, it's gonna be tough. You're gonna have a lot of guides and that's gonna eat into your pot part count too because I feel like it's not gonna be the same without the water wheel and the water and the moat going around it and the bridge. Um, it'll be very interesting to see how you get that done in blueprint format. In fact, can we find that out? Let's go to his Steam page and see if he's done it. No, this is a fairly new ride. So he does, this was made in March, so this month. So he's still figuring that out. So we will uh, find out at a future date. But a very fun creation here today by Capital Thrills. Three great Alpine coasters throughout the whole episode. Loved every single one of these, you guys. And uh, yeah, we had a... Uh um, two masters and a beginner really good stuff you guys keep up the good work and maybe uh, leave your comments down below Is that something you would like to see because right now? I'm doing bundles by theme and that is all that the submission form takes we do fantasy You know all these different themes But I, it dawned on me the other day when I tried to do a wooden coaster bundle But it was really hard to figure out which ones are wooden coasters without going through all of them And I thought hey, I want to do an episode that's just wooden coasters and if I want to do an X, uh, uh, You know what if someone su submits me an X dimension coaster? I want to know that it's an X Dimension Coaster. So I think having something like that would be pretty cool. But I want to know your guys' thoughts. Would you like to see coaster-specific bundles in the future? If so, leave a comment down below. And that'll be something I consider doing. But it'd be literally like a day or two long project to uh, relabel all of the submissions and change it for the future. But there are some changes that need to be made in the submission form. So I think a complete rehaul wouldn't be uh, too bad. And if we're gonna go and add in coaster types, well, that would, um, that would make it more worthwhile doing. So leave your thoughts down below. Leave the thoughts, your thoughts for the craters down below as well. What did you think of their coasters here today? And uh, that's gonna do it for me here today, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope you have a fantastic day and we'll see you in the next episode. Bye now.